Her qualities <coughs> respect her for her intelligence, her kindness, and her personality. Greta honors all commitments and does so with excellence. Um, in getting to know Greta and also getting to know her family, um, while we were um, having a conversation about this evening and I was um, putting together some of this stuff, I was asking her, what drives you and motivates you when you come into school? Because clearly everything she walks into, she's curious about. She said she sees the world as a puzzle to solve. And so she's always just wondering what's going on. So she's looking in my office and she sees this chair. She goes like, that chair right there. You know how many forces are on that chair? And I was like, I don't know, I don't. <laughs> but I'm sure you can tell. And it did. Um, and so when you're, when you're working with students like that, I know as teachers, um, they just really appreciate the fact that Greg, you're so curious about the world and you want to learn, 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 learn. And this is a place where um, we're glad to have you do that. So uh, best of luck to you in the future. We know you're going to make us very famous and proud as you <laughs> go about making the world a better place. But if you'd like to tell everybody tonight what you're interested in doing next year and then who's here with you. Um, so next year I'll be, or this year, I'll be applying to MIT. Carnegie Mellon, Johns Hopkins, and the University of Illinois. Um, and I'm interested in studying something with STEM, but I'm not sure what yet. And I'm with my parents, Laura and Stone Miller. Um, and I'd just like to thank you for um, everything you've done and the constant support um, that I've had for you guys and everything that I've done. And I hope to not be here with you guys.
her flexibility and versatility make her a remarkable student that any of us, especially her peers in English, should have done. And my last story about Olivia is my favorite. I told it to my daughter to visit her table that night. And several teachers actually refer to it in their letters to me. When I asked Olivia what she hoped she might experience during her senior year, she said, I want that aha moment. And then she elaborated. I like science and math, but I like art and literature too. I love it when it all clicks and everything I study makes sense together. She then proceeded to describe how on the flight to Hawaii for a family vacation, she decided to mark the occasion of the trip to a beautiful corner of the earth by measuring its radius. Um, she told me about taking a towel to the beach for several trials and bothering her parents, by the way, to help her with and um, laying it down, face down, and watching the sun decline to the horizon. And when it reached its lowest possible point, yet was still visible, she leapt up, timed the second sunset, and then used her height in meters to calculate the radius of the Earth within 5.2% error. She could tell you about those calculations, I cannot. So I would like to thank Olivia for giving me my aha moment, when all the parts of my work click together, and everything I do makes sense. So today, I know Earth just a little bit better because Olivia has exhaustively inspected, and I'm here to tell you. So on behalf of the Maine West High School faculty and staff, I am thrilled to present this honor for academic Consistently taken a challenging course load, but uh, I think with the exception of uh, senior leaders, everything else he's taking this year is AP, AP Cal BC, Lit and Comp, uh, U.S. Comparative Government Politics, AP Chem, AP Spanish Language, AP Psychology, so he's not exactly going easy here on the way out as a senior. Um, if you look at everything else again, he's done just about every AP we have and a little bit of dual credit and uh, quite a bit of Excel. Um, but beyond that, um, he's really been an active member of the Gifted Lyceum, and I'll talk about that in a moment. He's the president of our National Honor Society, uh, secretary of Maney's Cares, which are a school-wide um, philanthropic fundraiser. He's an executive officer for the Novus Club, I'll tell a little bit more about that. A uh, member of the Varsity Scholastic Bowl and Math team, he's also on the boys' uh, varsity volleyball team. Um, when we chatted a little bit last week, Christian told me he's interested in pursuing in the medical field, the plans to earn a bachelor's in science-related field, possibly physics. So again, when I put the call out to teachers, um, what I heard were two things. One, super strong in the classroom. Two, um, just an individual who is very, very conscientious, um, very willing to, generous and willing to help and work with others. Um, social science teacher Owen Doak um, was his APUSH teacher last year. and. Um, mentioned several things, but specifically said in Socratic seminars, Krishi proved to be an excellent participant and a discussion leader, a role that requires a mastery of the material, fairness, as well as excellent listening and questioning skills. It's also been my pleasure to get to know Krishi in Scholastic Bowl, um, where he's not only one of the highest scorers, he's also an excellent leader in both practices and competitions. He said on a personal level, on a le personal level, Krishi is a joyful and kind young man with outstanding people skills. Um, Wendy Reeves, who's an English teacher and sponsor for NHS, said, one of the things that impresses me most is that he always asks what he can do and how he can help before I ever get a chance to ask him for help. Um, last year he took on a leadership role for the largest fundraiser and knocked it out of the park. Uh, they did so well they were able to make a nice donation to the school-based health center and still support uh, the rest of the programs for the year. 
she described him as thoughtful and hardworking. Um, and said, there's not much this young man can't do. Uh, he took a lot of joy in the Lyceum trip this summer. And he's also interested in helping out a very local level with the main township food pantry, which he has designated as a specific um, target for uh, service for the NHS chapter. Uh, it was one of the things that uh, they plugged in Lyceum last year as one of the two senior projects. Um, so I mentioned he's a senior leader. He's working a lot with freshmen. And again, um, you know, freshmen, as they're trying to find their way, it's kind of nice when you've got somebody who's been around, kind of knows the ropes, and he's, again, very generous in working with them. Um, Rachel Sandlin, who sponsors Maney's Cares, said he's a great influence on his peers. He's encouraged many students to join Maney's Cares in addition to mentoring younger students for leadership positions in the club. Um, and then John Felicia, who also works with him in the leader program, but is also a volleyball coach, said he was a backup setter last year, but he provided the team much needed prep work for upcoming matches. He's a selfless player who recognizes the team first mindset that athletic programs need. When I mentioned notice, uh, John Schwann, who is a business teacher and uh, teaches entrepreneurship, said Christian was a founding member of Novus, with a club dedicated to entrepreneurship and technology. The club has grown to over 60 members over the last three years as a result of Christian's contributions, where he has both recently served as vice president of membership and operations. Um, he describes how he was in charge of posters, recruiting, working with kids on committees ahead of time to make sure things were getting done. So it was kind of the meeting before the meeting. Uh, John said um, he helped, um, Chrissy helped John prepare for workshops and events basically by being his secretary and getting all the work done on time. Um, he's also uh, was responsible for finding and scheduling guest speakers. Uh, he reached out to the founder of Paychex, which is a billion dollar corporation, and uh, that individual spoke to our members at Maine East about that particular um, organization. Additionally, Chrissy competed in the Startup Business Plan Pitch Competition in 1871, which uh, down the March, Chicago's incubator, and uh, he won the event, taking home a check for $1,000. So, um, Judy Tyler has worked really closely with him for four years in the Gift of Life CM program. She said this, she said, Chrissy's a pretty amazing kid. I had him in AP Bio last year, and he's in Lyceum. He was a quiet leader in the classroom last year, great in any group that I put him in. Even though he grasped information quickly, it was never intimidating to his uh, market group, thoughtfully complete, uh, contemplated others' ideas. Of course, he got a five on the exam because he's a student who has mastered the art of organization and prioritization. He was able to take two AP science classes at the same time while juggling many other difficult subjects and being heavily involved in extracurriculars. Um, what makes him stand out in his classes is leadership. He's consistently pushing Lyceum classmates to get more involved in service learning projects. Uh, he counted, she counted multiple group texts this summer that he sent to motivate his peers. He's a liaison to Gateway to Learning, which is one of the partner organizations that serves cognitively challenged adults, um, which for me was a standout moment, and we did you know, the service projects last fall. Uh, Richie's team got up, and let them still have a representative of the organization who comes in. So it was, uh, I think, one of the organizers that is from uh, this organization, and also one of the clients who came up. As I recall, uh, they were talking, I think, about cook making cookies or some sort of thing, and um, the client was very excited, very enthusiastic about that, and sort of came up unbid unplanned and unbeknownst. And Krishi uh, looked exactly like it was planned. He was gracious and uh, very, very poised, and basically, kind of interviewed uh, this, this young man on the spot. And uh, you know, again, it was one of those things where um, it was great to see kind of what he brought to it, get to see him shine as an individual. Um, Craig Bruce, who also works with Gifted um, Lyceum, just said he's a delight. He's really only worked with him as freshman year, or a great freshman Lyceum students, and then on the Lyceum trip this summer. Craig said it was just amazing to see how much he's grown and matured over these past three years. Um, Trip, true leader, always looking to try and bring people together to accomplish whatever task is at hand, very inclusive. Um, he's just a solid student. He is motivated, he's driven, um, he sees how excellence it only does. He certainly, through the example he sets and the work he's done and the way he motivates others, has made our school um, a better place. And uh, very proud of him. I'm sure he's going to be doing great things in the future and wish you all the best. Congratulations.
I was joining the community today. Uh, my dad couldn't make it. These are the reasons that I'm here today. Uh, some of the, I'm planning on pursuing the medical field, but like not really sure what specific colleges I'm looking at right now. So like I hope to pursue that. NYU is like paying your tuition is so in all 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, finance committee update. Linda. Sure. So the finance meeting was held on August 19, 2019. Uh, members of the president were myself, Linda Quayle, Aurora Ostriaco, and Jin Lee. Um, I called the meeting to order at 506. There were no public comments. We did discuss the final budget for 2019 2020. I think we're going to vote on that later today. Yeah. So um, Ms. Blue ran through some changes from the tentative to the final budget. On the revenue side, uh, we had increases to $290,651,800. The $70 million plus difference was due to increasing the sale of the referendum bonds, which we're also going to discuss later today, uh, 60 by $65 million for an interest savings to uh, GASB 84 also requires, now requires, student activity fund to be budgeted in the education fund, which added 3.7 million in revenue. In addition, CCPRT estimates were 1.5 million greater than the tentative. And then on the expenditure side, the final budget increased by 4,405,270. Uh, 3.7 million of that was added because that's the GASB 84, it was flipped back over to that side, to the expenditure side. The IMRF rate increase of 35% for approximately 200,000, and the IDEA grant carryover fund of 400,000. And again, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna vote on the final budget today. A big part of our discussion at the finance meeting was the bond sale parameters. Um, PMA spoke about the current bond market conditions and it was really a positive uh, presentation. They talked about timelines, referendum financing options, refunding opportunity, and selling bonds through the Illinois Finance Authority. They said that conditions are very favorable right now. Supply is down and investors <clears throat> are in demand to purchase bonds. In a, the one thing that we've got to note that the district must reasonably spend 5% of the bonds within six months of bond issuance and 85% within three years, and we were assured that, that would, neither of those would be a problem. Um, and these proceeds would be maybe spent on architectural fees and or, or awarding of bids. Um, two scenarios were presented to the board. Scenario one would be to issue 130 million in bonds this fall, and scenario two would be to issue 65 million in bonds in each, each in 2019 and 2021. Um, PMA, the representatives explained that if interest rates are predicted to increase by more than 0.55% between fall of 2019 and spring of 21, it would be advantageous for us to go with scenario one. It will result in significant interest savings to taxpayers, and it would be less of a risk to go with scenario one, because we know the community will not certainty. Um, we also have an option of issuing some bonds for the Illinois Finance Authority, which would be a savings that there are no federal or state taxes. Uh, we're going to discuss, this blue is going to go into a little more detail right this yes. evening, um, and we're going to vote on bonds. Finally, we talked about, um, we discussed a contract with Infinite Campus, which would be a companion program to what we already have, and what this companion program would do would give parents the option to report absences online instead of calling into the attendance office. And attendance can also be scanned from the student ID in the large common areas. Uh, student personnel, such as counselors and nurses, can also record student visits. The initial cost for year one to the training is $14 million.
32 teachers are piloting a year-long grading process as an alternative to our two separate semester class grades under the concept of standards-based grading. The year-long process extends the amount of time for students to reach proficiency 
and gives more flexibility for students to arrive at a grade. Um, students receive grades on um, each standard that rolls up to an overall course grade. Information about the standards-based grading pilot can be found on the district website, which is a good thing for um, the appearance of anyone else who is interested. Because this is a pilot, we will collect data and monitor and, and adjust as we go in preparation for launching the, two, the year two pilot in January slash February. Next up was competency-based education, um, which um, under which students advance through, through the coursework based on proficiency or mastery of content. More administrators will be trained this year, and administrators and teachers will begin to discuss what competency what competency would look like in each discipline. Math 1 is currently taught in this model, and Math 2 will be developed in a competency model this year for implementation in 2021. Finally, he gave us an update on Math 1. He said it's going well so far at the high school and in our partner districts, where some 7th and 8th graders are taking the course. Um, there will be a meeting upcoming in the next month or so, uh, with partner districts to see what is going well, what support they may need, and what may need some tweaking. Um, for, we, we discussed, uh, for struggling students in math, we have a companion course called Foundation of Problem Solving. Also, Math 2 and Transitional Math are in development in a competency-based model and will be implemented in 2021. Um, Mr. Messner also added that there's a video on our grading process on the district website. The meeting was adjourned at uh, 9 and 6 in the morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also the ad hoc policy committee. Carla, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Uh, yes, there was an ad hoc policy committee meeting held um, also on August 26th. President Babb with the members of the committee were Ostriaco, Terry Bynes, and myself. Um, also present with Red Deeds, Jimmy Edwards, and George Dagris. This was a meeting held with the policy services team at IASB in connection with our movement to what's known as Press Plus. We are currently following press, um, many press policies. We have adopted them. This is to get us fully in line with Press Plus so everything can be updated automatically. And this was an important meeting to determine if there are any variations in our current policy versus what's in the press so that we don't have any discrepancies. Um, it's the first of several meetings um, that must be completed before we can move forward. Uh, that meeting lasted approximately two hours and adjourned at 1121 a.m. Monthly status of finances. Thank you, board packet is the July financial statements. There are no real variances. You can see really on the revenue side, it has to do with when taxes come in. So there may be slight variances from year to year, but with only one month of fiscal year, I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, on the expenditure side, the only variances are those ones that pay for capital projects, because if you recall, summer of 2019 capital projects were lower than last year when we were finishing up. So I'm going to make sure I'll entertain any questions that anybody has on the future
districts in accordance with the law. The safety and security is a press policy that our policy manual had multiple policies that kind of fed into it. So this summarizes it all in one place and covers everything from our annual safety drills to AEDs to safe soccer goals, uns unsafe schools of choice, lead-based testing and emergency closing. So there are <coughs> probably about a year going through all of the procedures related to this policy to make sure that we were, um, our procedures were in line with the law as well. And this is a comprehensive policy now for safety and security in one place. And then finally, the pandemic preparedness um, is almost identical to our old policy. However, what we did is we separated the policy from the procedures. So the strike groups that you see are not deletions, but those are things that we moved to procedures. Choice on the second page. Please 